Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Most of you probably already know that the SEC has asked to file an appeal. The big question is whether or not this is going to come to pass. Which options do we have for moving forward? Well, I'll elaborate, as I have more legal insight hearings coming up. Headline, headline, crypto law expert predicts Judge Torres will reject SEC's appeal. And I'll just say up front that my for fun guests, which is all they are, because I am not an attorney and merely play one on YouTube, are just that, for fun. Let me hazard a guess and say the appeal request? In the end, even if it is approved, it will be rejected. That is the most likely result, in my opinion. However, James Murphy is the name of a well-regarded lawyer in the field. Actually, he has great insights. He has an abundance of wisdom and information, both legal and otherwise. He isn't as sure of himself as he seems. So it's possible that the appeal won't be accepted after all. However, I'll just relay his exact words on the matter and the possible ways that it may go apart, as he mentioned a few things that I hadn't heard anyone else remark as even viable choices, and they piqued my curiosity. Even if the SEC wins its appeal against Hogan, the crypto basic exchanges will not list XRP, according to this story. Indeed, that is the case. There is more to say than what attorney Hogan and I have already spoken in videos. But even if it ends that way, which is highly improbable even if the SEC wins on appeal, XRP will be around for the foreseeable future. But before I go any further, I should make it clear that I have no support of any kind, either financially or legally. I am not qualified to give you financial or legal guidance. Furthermore, you should not make any financial decisions based on what I say. Just a hobbyist here that occasionally posts films to YouTube on various crypto-related topics. After the SEC requested to file an interlocutory appeal in the Ripple action, we insert the first part. Scott Chamberlain, who used to be a lawyer, has made a bold assertion about the request. Interlocutory appeal is also worth mentioning as a pleasant reminder. The SEC, it seems, thinks things have gone so horribly wrong that they can't wait until the end of this to file an appeal, which is the type of appeal request that comes before the finish of adjudication or the ending of a litigation. This is the legal action. The jury trial's brunch can't come soon enough for us. Since we're just baby back sex pitches to the SEC, we have to file an appeal right away. And that is precisely what they put down on paper. We're totally aware of how babyish we sound. That biatch is on her way to the judge tour. So, uh, maybe we should go our separate ways? Maybe I'm incorrect, though, maybe everyone reads bitches, and that's why it's accepted. However, stability has been maintained. Today, Chamberlain tweeted his belief that Judge Annalisa Torres would rule against the SEC in their request for an interlocutory appeal. The words of Scott Chamberlain, himself. I think Judge Torres will rule against the motion. She avoided the issue of the new legislation with extreme care. She discovered that the token is not the security accepted by the SEC in its categorization of the transaction buckets to be evaluated and simply applied the methods we and its descendants use to analyze transactions to the SEC's selected buckets. Not because Judge Torres moved the legal goalposts on the description of those products, but because the undisputed facts didn't support all the Howey prongs for two of SEC's three designated transaction buckets. Yeah. Even if the appeal is successful, there is still something I want to say here that Attorney Deaton has already mentioned several times. Since Judge Torres only addressed one of the Howey test's prongs in her ruling, she can easily move to the other prongs and come to the same conclusion, sending the case back to the original judge for a final decision. So, Attorney Deaton has stated that this is a lost cause, but former Attorney Chamberlain is skeptical that it will even get that far. However, Attorney James Murphy believes that it is closer than most people realize. Here's what Metal Lawman, aka Attorney James Murphy, had to say on Twitter, which was originally known as X words like SEC slash and Ripper and Ripple were heard this morning. Interlocutor appeal analysis with a ripple effect. 
In this article, I will discuss the potential responses that Torres has to the SEC's request that he serve as a judge in an interlocutory appeal. First, Ripple could argue that the ruling is obviously accurate and file an appeal against the motion to serve. Because of the high probability of yet another appeal following the trial of Garlinghouse and Larson, option to agree with the SEC that interlocutory appeal is appropriate, it would be wasteful and inefficient to file an interlocutory appeal to the Second Circuit just to confirm that fact. I'll pause for a moment to make a note. This one took me completely by surprise. This is an idea I hadn't considered, and as far as I'm aware, no one else in the crypto community had either. Therefore, he repeated, we can agree that this is a viable choice for Ripple. It's possible, and it doesn't matter if he's likely or not. I agree with the SEC that an appeal at this stage is warranted. Yes, a potential alternative. The SEC may find Ripple to be acceptable. Indeed, an appeal is required. This response, he continues, while improbable, would not surprise me at all. This case will almost certainly be appealed. After the trials of Garland House and Larson, the only remaining question is whether or not the appeals process will begin immediately. It's okay, I don't care, no, I'm good as I am. The lawyer is not me. To me, that just doesn't make sense. Nonetheless, I just don't understand the point. As far as I'm concerned, the SEC's use of so much pretrial motion practice was really a stalling ploy that should be put to rest as soon as possible. And we'd experienced a downrip of some sort. Having things bogged down is bad for Ripple and for the company's future. However, XRP now has the necessary legal certainty to put Ripple in the driver's seat. Then why is there such a big deal about Ripple? Do you know how to reach the land of appeal? Why bother with the appeal phase if we're already Ripple? I mean, I just... Unless I'm missing something obvious, I don't think that's likely. However, he is merely speculating about what might happen. Then he argues that we have the choice to agree with him that an appeal at this stage is warranted. However, it is important to note that the SEC claim on institutional sales should be certified for a cross-appeal by Ripple. The reasoning behind Alternative 2, A, is that everyone can avoid the penalty phase if the Second Circuit overturns, and the SEC wins, on the institutional sales allegation. And a trial for assisting and abetting the institutional sales wouldn't be necessary. That's not the only positive outcome to consider, though. However, that doesn't affect Ripple, so I think it's fine. Because ripples aren't in play, you're going to go with an early appeal and say, yeah, we agree with that stipulation and then hope that it helps Brad and Chris. The jury system does not work like that. This is not the purpose of the trials. There's still some doubt in my mind as to why that would ever be seriously considered in that context. But what does Mr. Murphy's legal team anticipate happening? I think Ripple will choose option one, he says. First and foremost, we respectfully dissent from the motion for interlocutory appeal. For three reasons, this is the case. Things are about to get even more intriguing. So, I found the idea of possibly creating a green ripple to be intriguing. This, however, bear with me for a moment. That totals three excellent arguments. First and foremost, he does not want to accept the premise, which is part of the legal criterion for certifying an interlocutory appeal, that there are substantial reasons for difference of opinion on judge towards this judgment. According to Ripples, the judge's decision on XRP sales on the secondary market is justified and in line with precedent going back decades. Second, a crypto bill has a small but non-negligible probability of being approved by Congress and signed into law by the President. Given that the original institutional buyers of XRP tokens did not obtain equity or legal rights to share in profits created by Ripple in exchange for their money, it is possible that such laws might describe the original institutional sales of XRP as not securities transactions. It's a long shot, I'll admit. All right, here's the one where I was all, check this out. Right after this, he continues, 
we'll have a new administration that knows exactly what I'm talking about, put in your own percentage. But there's still some intrigue here. In January of 2025, a new administration is possible, with the exact probability left up to the reader. Having a radically different opinion on how the SEC handles crypto enforcement activities. As soon as a new administration takes office, the case may be dropped or settled on terms more favorable to Ripple. I say this because I disagree with the interlocutory because I think Ripple is more like a leader who opts for a more leisurely path. Appeal. Yeah. That's why I believe that to be the most likely explanation. That's the opinion of the vast majority of lawyers I've read about, at least. But now I come to the thrilling paragraph I was anticipating reading and find myself wondering, what will Judge Torres do here? We haven't thought of what he's suggesting, but there's a good chance she'll do it because of what he suggests. Have a look. Attorney Murphy argues, I believe this is a much closer call than most people think, despite the fact that interlocutory appeals with a motion to certify are typically assigned a very low likelihood of success. So, I'm going to stop writing for now. What do you think I should do with the following reading from Attorney Murphy? Judge Rakes Off, who sits on the panel of judges for Torres's district, is one of the sources he uses. That person is presiding over the Terra case. The Terra Luna scenario. Do Quan, the panic that broke out in May of last year and led to the contagion, as it was called at the time. The three capital arrows could fall, creating a cascading effect and all that nonsense. So, Judge Rakoff finally ruled on the Ripple case. And he disregarded it, at least partially. Magistrate Torres. I'm going to assume that you all already know that. In any event, I felt it necessary to preface the next, critically crucial section with that caveat. To get rid of the rogue judge or judicial rake. And here is what lawyer Murphy had to say about it. The likelihood that Judge Torres may take the uncommon step of certifying the interlocutory appeal is significantly increased by Judge Rick Off's judgment in the Terraform Labs case. It's interesting, I can honestly say I haven't heard anything like it from anyone else. Judge Rakoff's illogical statements have increased the likelihood that Judge Torres will say, well, okay, Judge, even in my own district, in Attorney Murphy's estimation. Let's sign this agreement then. Let's start the appeals procedure right now. That would be intriguing, though. The likelihood of such happening is beyond my understanding. But that's a fascinating idea, for sure. Nobody else has gotten in touch with me. But even if it does happen, and I know I mentioned this the other day, but it bears repeating because it's such an interesting statistic to statistics, it still doesn't tell you anything about the likelihood of anything. When considering attractiveness. Never once has a ruling of Judge Torres been overturned. This was disclosed by Attorney Deaton. I wonder what else the lawyer covered up for the judge to steal. His judgments have been overturned. It was either 53 or 56 times that, but at this point, we're really just splitting hairs. It's a considerable amount. Judging my buddies is a renegade. To be continued. After the briefing on the request to certify is over, he adds, I will give you my final guess on what Judge Torres will do. It will take about a month to complete that briefing. In particular, I like Attorney Murphy's advice since he consistently offers a fresh perspective that differs from that of most other lawyers in his field. You could probably say that about most people, but I've found it to be especially true of him. And then there's this from the world of cryptocurrencies, even if the SEC wins its appeal, cryptocurrency exchanges won't delist XRP. Hogan, and I'm glad to hear it. And I think he's probably dead on. Here, have a look. Because my ego is so enormous, I want to draw attention to the fact that I am mentioned in this piece. Regardless of the outcome of the SEC's appeal against Ripple, XRP will not be delisted from exchanges. Remember that the SEC asked to file an interlocutory appeal, and that the judge's finding on Ripple's programmatic sales and other distributions will be part of the interlocutory appeal. 
Some XRP supporters worry about what would happen if a higher court ruled that the XRP sold through Ripple's programmatic exchange was a security. Moon Lumbo, a popular XRP video blogger, just tweeted. Son, you don't even know whether I'm wearing trousers, and this is from a notable ditch dug by an XRP YouTuber named Moon Lumbo. Moon Lumbo is my name, by the way. To begin, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Crypto Basic for putting a prominent XRP YouTuber, Moon Lumbo, on his badge. However, while I find it hilarious that I'm being referred to as such, I'd like to point out that while they may have gotten one detail slightly off, I'm not going to lay too heavy a hand on the paintbrush with him for this oversight. In any case, I think I saw them in a tweet by a popular XRP YouTuber just now. If I want to be taken seriously in the crypto community, I need to improve my LinkedIn page, which is currently certified as notable by the Crypto Basic. I have to make some adjustments in my life anyhow, and today's tweet from popular XRP YouTuber Moon Lumbo seemed to suggest that trading on the secondary market for XRP wouldn't be impacted even if all programmatic sales were ruled to be securities. Then they used the following quotation from me. Isn't that the logical continuation of the idea that XRP is a security and a hypothetical? So, that's the deal, and they claimed in their article that I was making assumptions about the truth. However, I was quoted, and I believe that the quotes they used were accurate, I would have to check to be sure. That's not me making that claim, by the way, I'm only pointing out the obvious. That was me posing a query. That's me being uncertain and looking for clarification. To be clear, I wasn't making any wild assumptions when I made that statement. That's why I'm telling you, the status of programmatic sales as securities. In the end, we determined that programmatic selling was effective. They are not, in fact. And the explanation is elementary in its simplicity. Since Judge Torres is only ruling on programmatic sales as it relates to Ripple, Brad, and Chris, this is the reason that programmatic or well, that as it pertains to us anyway. Yes, that's the last word. Yes, that's the last word. The judgment on programmatic sales had nothing to do with the legal status of XRP, thus even if an appeal were successful, the ruling would have no effect. Even if it was dicta, the judge was not obligated to rule on it. So, you know, there's this perspective that's optional, that she included. In other words, this is the rule of law. However, the SEC has no grounds for an appeal. Therefore, XRP's legal standing is that it is not a security. And then attorney Hogan added even more detail by writing that only Ripple and other founders can sell XRP as an investment contract. Consequently, I do not believe they will delist as long as they can obtain XRP through alternative means, like as the secondary market, rather than directly from Ripple. Yeah. That's what I would anticipate, then. However, the SEC is in a difficult position. The reality is that they are helpless. That's why Gary Gensler has declared that he's going to give AI a close examination not too long ago, not even a week ago, or whenever it was. It would appear that AI has been elevated to the role of guard. Gary is coming for all you AI nerds, so have fun. Wishing you the best of luck. Wishing you the best of luck. But it doesn't look like they're going to put more emphasis on crypto because of this. Finding XRP is not a security is a huge win for them because what would happen if they continued prosecuting developers working on top of specific block chains that have cryptocurrencies native to them? Things aren't looking good. Could this case nevertheless carry significant weight even if it is not a binding precedent in other courts? Mike, this way, and know that as it relates to XRP, there is no ambiguity. The obvious follow-up issue is whether or not that standard must be applied to future endeavors, the answer is no. It seems like you need to cooperate with a higher court, though I can't say for sure how or if the Supreme Court will be involved. However, we are secure. And that's exactly the point. That's the crux of the situation. Moon Lumbo, an influential YouTuber who uses XRP. Lumbo has said as much, so take his word for it, I'm a reputable part of society. No, I don't give out financial advice. 
Nothing I observe or write should ever be used as justification for the purchase or sale of anything. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later. Bye.